Hello, this is a series of lectures on many electron atoms. This is a for a course in the Department of Chemistry, University of Lagos. My name is Dr. Winnie. A many electron atom contains more than one electron. It's different from the hydrogen-like system that contains just one electron. For the hydrogen atom that contains just one electron, Bohr was able to come up with an equation to explain the spectra and that um, the energy of the li lines and at, um, electrons jump from one energy level to, energy to another energy level and each energy level is described by the equation HC where H is Planck's constant, C is speed of light and RH is right back constant multiplied by 1, N, 1 over N squared where N takes the values 1 to 3 however as at that time there was no justification for this uh, n taking this uh, values, which means that the energy levels were quantized. Schrodinger was able to solve that equation. Schrodinger's equation is based on h psi equals e psi, where h is the Hamiltonian operator or energy operator, and it's a sum of kinetic energy operator and the potential energy operator. And psi is called the wave function. The wave function according um, is a function that contains all the information that is needed about the molecule so from the solution of the Schrodinger equation psi is a product of a radial function that determines that uh, um, explains the, the behavior of the electron as it moves from the nucleus and far away to the nucleus and uh, an angular function which takes care of the path that it traces around the nucleus the solution yielded quantum number the, the, the equation is well behaved when we have the quantum number n l n is the principal quantum number which takes similar values from here and then the n value in the Bohr equation is justified there were other um, quantum numbers that came out from here, a quantum number in the sense that it can only take a certain value, then we have the orbital quantum number, the magnetic quantum number and the spin quantum number. E, which is the energy value, the energy that uh, was obtained here, is a product of many constants divided by several other constants. Z is the atomic charge and in particular we have that n squared. The energy of the hydrogen, hydrogenic atom depends only on the principal quantum number n and does not depend on L or ML or S. So if we plot, pl plug this in, all these constants in for hydrogen, then we have minus 13.6 Z squared electron volts. For hydrogen in the ground state, Z is 1. Hydrogen, Z is 1. In the ground state, N is 1. And the minus 13.6 electron volt is the minimum energy or its ionization energy. That's the minimum energy to require to remove the electron from the ground state and from the bound state of the atom. Now, the, for a many electron atoms, things get more complicated with the more than one electron. There are other attractions, there are other um, interactions that come up and this is majorly, the, the one that's mostly complicated is the repulsion. So the simple Bohr expression cannot explain the spectra of the atom and we're faced with the Schrodinger equation again. If we recall the Hamiltonian for the hydrogen atom is a simple expression and it's uh, uh, so this depends on the coordinates and the potential energy that's the part that makes it simple depends only on its the distance of one particle from another particle for a helium atom it gets more complicated so we have the kinetic energy for electron one the helium atom has two electrons kinetic energy for electron two Potential energy for the attraction between electron 1, 
So if we look at this, um, this expression, that's the potential energy of attraction. Z here is 2. That's the nuclear charge of uh, helium. R1, indicating that we're talking about electron 1. So this is the potential energy of attraction for electron 2. And this is the electron-electron interaction. That's a potential energy of repulsion. It's repulsive. So we can collect like terms, the kinetic energy and the potential energy. However, this equation depends on just one particle. So it describes a spherical motion. That's just that's for the hydrogen atom. Here we have two particles competing for the spherical space. So it gets more complicated. Um, the the uh, as a, the again what gets more complicated and it, the Schrodinger equation. So now this being used in the Schrodinger equation, which side this side cannot be solved exactly even for the helium atom. The Schrodinger equation cannot be solved exactly for any many electron system. However, solutions, approximations are then introduced. The first approximation, the many, the orbital approximation, assumes or ignores all interactions between electrons and considers each electron as moving under the action of only the nucleus. So what that means is that it considers that the particle is moving as its kinetic energy, its potential energy of attraction to the nucleus. So we have this for the first electron and this for the second electron. And then the electron-electron interaction is taking off. So this simply becomes H equals the kinetic energy of 1, kinetic energy of 2, potential energy of 1 and attraction between the nucleus and the electron and potential energy of 2 between the nucleus and the nucleus. So if we recall the Hamiltonian for hydrogen, it's simply the addition of Hamiltonian 1 and Hamiltonian 2 which had best resemblance to the to that of the hydrogen atom and solving this this makes solving it easily as we can separate variables r1 and r2 and then we have that this wave function can be expressed as a product of wave function for electron one and wave function of electron two so this is the statement of the orbital approximation that each electron is assumed to occupy its own atomic orbital. Recall that the, the wave function for the hydrogen atom is called an atomic orbital. So each electron is assumed to occupy its own atomic orbital and this atomic orbital bears a close resemblance to that of the hydrogenic orbital. So that's the statement of the orbital approximation and that's how we arrived at it. So the beautiful thing is that the orbital approximation allows us to express electronic structure of atom by reporting its electronic configuration. So an ele electron 1 can occupy this orbital, electron 2 can occupy that orbital. For the hydrogenic system, so we can report it as 1s1. So these are concepts that we are familiar with. So as 1s1 and for the helium atom with two electrons, we can report this as 1s2. So the energy of helium will now also simply be energy 1, E1, ele energy of electron 1 plus energy of electron 2, which is also similar to the energy of the hydrogen atom. So it will simply be z squared times energy of a hydrogen-like system because it has turned into the equation, the Hamiltonian has turned into the Hamiltonian of two hydrogen-like systems combined together. However, there's a little error in it. The first ionization energy of a helium is about 24.6 
the second ionization energy of helium is about 54.4 electron volts so the sum of those two is about um, 78 electron volts if we consider the electron energy from this equation we will have about 108 electron volts that means that this cannot be ignored this cannot be ignored however the orbital approximation is still useful in writing the electron uh, configuration albeit the error in predicting the energy values so there are some other um, approximations that are more accurate than the orbital approximation however if we look at the orbital approximation and consider it with other atom for example lithium has three electrons would the electronic configuration be 1s3 well if it's not 1s3 what is it so in the next video we will consider the spin and poly's exclusion principle and the electronic configuration of lithium.